Welcome to Scream Queen's Road Trip Podcast. <coughs> that is your birthday final girl over there. She's celebrating her birthday. And it is my birthday, you little soul survivor boy over there to my left. Hello, hi, thank hi. you for that. Hi, I'm Mr. Josh. Happy birthday, Miss Justine. Josh, that's so sweet to introduce me as the birthday girl. I'm your birthday (laughs) final girl. And we are currently driving through Ohio. Making Ohio, Ohio. Why did we drive through Ohio? Ohio? Uh, We're heading to the beach, the bench. We are trying to get ourselves to Ocean City, Did Maryland. Did you just call me a name? I called you... Like, slid it in? No, I said we're going to the beach. You're go- we're going to the beach, and then you said... Beach. Beach. <laughs> <laughs> to me we're or the to, audience? We're like, going to the beach. We are betches going to the beach. Ocean City, Maryland, here we come to cover Jaws 3 Double D. That's me in 3D, guys. My 3D voice. Yeah, guys, we're extra today. Extra annoying. Everything. Um, we're excited. It's a birthday. It is it's, my birthday. We're getting closer to the ocean. It's um, it's a mixture of things. Yesterday, also, I think maybe we're getting into that part of the drive because yesterday was almost 12 hours of driving. Yeah, we stopped off in Indianapolis. We had a nice dinner at the Rathskeller, really great German restaurant. It's been there for like over a hundred years, which is like a lot of years. And it was amazing. It was so good. And I don't, I'm not just throwing amazing around, like it was amazing. I mean, it was amazing. Not not amazing, it was amazing. I believe the Germans would say it was wunderbar. Yeah. <laughs> so in the bar. We got nine. And I saw lots of wieners there. And <laughs> we saw the bratwurst and the mm, currywurst. We is like, oh my gosh. No, I actually briefly... didn't have bratwurst or currywurst. But... Guys, we got to tell you briefly, because we had a scary moment at the German restaurant, but it had nothing to do with like somebody jumping out and scaring us. Josh thought his brain was going to explode. Oh, dear Lord. I, the hottest mustard I've ever had. She told us, she's like, the hot. hot mustard is for your pretzel. And we're kind of like, yeah, lady, we know how this is done. And I... Oh, Josh said, yeah, lady, this how... And then he slapped her. <laughs> and then I said, get in the kitchen to get my meal. Yeah. But... <laughs> actually... <laughs> actually, I was very kind. I was like, oh, great, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> However, I dipped like a big big old dollop well, of that, mustard. that pretzel and you like spooned it in there. You got yourself a heaping supply of I stuck it in my mouth dynamite. and probably two bites in I regretted that decision. And the way he, his eyes popped out, his hands went up over to his head like to brace it. Like he really thought that his skull was going to detach <laughs> You know that, like, feeling with horseradish? There's obviously a lot of horseradish. A lot! Where, like, it cleans your sinuses, and then it, you can feel it, like, in your scalp, like, tingling. I got, like, the biggest sensation of that I've ever had in my life. Yeah. Josh's sinuses, his sinas- asses, his brain acid, like, every crevice of him was getting cleaned out. I had anal leakage all night. It was intense. Anyways, we're back on the road after a nice <laughs> night in Indianapolis. And wonderful German food. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah, so now we're in Ohio. And I have to say, did you guys notice that little thing I did with the intro? I, I knocked something off. I just said Scream Queen's Road Trip Podcast. <gasps> oh, what? oh, you let it slip? I let it slip. We've been discussing maybe getting rid of the horror movie part of our title. It's a little redundant. Yeah. Just streamlining it a little bit. Yeah. There's also a couple newer podcasts trying to use the name Scream Queen, so <gasps> thought maybe I shortening mean, the title would help there not be as much confusion. Spell it differently all you want, guys. There's two queens sitting right here, and we were the forced. <laughs> we're the forced Anyways. on the scene. Um, you know, just a little the more the podcast merrier, though, drama. The yeah, podcast of course. World. Like just we're not gatekeepers name. by any means. So I'm just like, use a different name. <laughs> just yeah, just think something else up. Um, we've been around for a while now. Yeah. Um, how many years, Josh, are we celebrating? This is, um, our, this is our this is our fifth year. Yep. So we're going back to where it all started, which is Ocean City, Maryland. That's where episode one was. We also did a Jaws two episode there a few years ago. So here we are. Jaws 3D. Yeah, and it is a trek from Oklahoma City to 
to Ocean City, Maryland. That's it's I a think journey. almost 24 hours if you drove straight through. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna stop off at my papa's house. And Josh got a little pappy, a little pappy, and a little pammy that we're gonna be seeing in the probably about 45 minutes to an hour west of DC area. Yeah, stop off there. In the Shenandoah Valley, which we're gonna do another episode there after this episode. So. Yes, this We're is covering, covering a lot of ground. Back to back trekking to the East Coast. Um, okay, yeah, you guys got it. We're gonna do Jaws 3D 1983, directed by the legendary <laughs> Joe Alves. <laughs> Didn't know you were gonna say who <laughs> directed this movie and nothing else. And that's it. He was actually the production designer of the first two, so hence how he got this gig. Yes, and there's there's a there, this movie itself is. <laughs> The way it came about is it's a little dramatic because um, the all the original producers really wanted to make it a spoof. That's the yep. first thing they wanted to do. They were like, you know what? We've had two really, you know, pretty solid Jaws shark movies. movies. So let's make fun of ourselves. They were going to call it Jaws 3 People 0. Yeah, it was going to be National Lampoon's Jaws 3, Three People, People Zero. Zero, which sounds hilarious. Hilarious. Yeah. What's funny is this movie is hilarious. It's just unintentional. <laughs> yeah, they weren't really meaning for it to be so. Yeah. It uh, takes itself too seriously. But Spielberg took himself too seriously. Yeah. He was like, I'm going to sue you guys. So they didn't make it. And said he would walk from Universal if they did it, which I'm just like, okay, okay, okay Mr. Dick slapping around. <laughs> kid killer himself. The original kid killer. Yes. Here he is. Slapping his dick around now. Not only is he a kid killer, but he's a dick slapper. Now he's a okay. mushroom stamping kid killer. Here we go. And I just mean that in movies, and I do know not mean that <laughs> Steven Spielberg kills Allegedly. Children. Actually. Allegedly. He's talking about in the movie, you guys all know that poor little baby boy hanging out on that raft in Jaws. Just say allegedly, Justine. Allegedly. You can say anything. Oh, yeah. Want. Allegedly, everybody <laughs> <laughs> loves. Everybody knows. But the funny thing is, I can see John Alves on the set of the first two Jaws saying, like, fuck you, Steven. All I want in these movies is some fucking dolphins and you won't put them in the movie. So the second he got his chance, he's like, oh. I'm putting in dancing dolphins. There's gonna be people on jet skis. Water and skis. Tacky yes, costumes. Like choreographed water ski dances and aerobics will be happening. Okay, yeah. Let's. Ho he oh. said, Steven, checkmate. Yeah. I'm, I'm making my Jaws, and it's going to be the most glorious thing you've ever seen. And, unfortunately, nobody from the first two films is going to return for it. Yeah, Roy Scheider, they knew from the very beginning, would not be coming back. And the original concept for this film was that, like, a shark swims, like, upstream a river and gets trapped in a lake. And yes. it's terrorizing people in the lake. And then, you know, workshop after workshop later, it's like, now it's in SeaWorld. And... Yeah. And yeah, he Here we Roy are. was not ever going to be in the third one. He was he was contractually obligated to be in the second mm -hmm. one. And in fact, he did the second one to get out of further contracts that he had. So um, he was like playing game checkmate. Uh, yeah. and he was definitely not going to be on this go round. But um, Lorraine Gray, who will make an appearance in Jaws, the Revenge. Yes. Um, Jaws 4 um, doesn't so we get to meet up with the two boys and this is another like bone of contention for Josh and I we're let like, just we'll address it right now 1975 Jaws 1 1978 Jaws 2 1983 Jaws 3 Josh that's like five eight yeah, years eight like, years between the original and that one and somehow like, these kids have grown up like Almost 15 years. 20 years. Like, so, for... okay. So, from the get-go, I guess it's set in the future. We're in, like, a new reality. It's the... definitely not really 83. Yeah, Brody, the Brody boys. He's nearly 30. An are... established engineer. Yes. Yeah, the sons are now the main stars of this movie. And like she said, one of them is the main engineer at SeaWorld. And he's dating the head biologist. So, there's no way he's, like, 19 or whatever he should have been. If it was going by the actual timeline, yeah. the timeline of when the movies were released, and which is fine, whatever, but it's just kind of funny. Yeah, and it's not really ever clearly stated. Uh, it does say that it's at SeaWorld, but it doesn't really mention too much where. We just know that it's up against the ocean, ocean. because 
the ocean and sea world there's just a gate an underwater gate that divides them so but the orlando sea world that is actually at orlando is some what 50 miles from, from the, the ocean, ocean yeah. so and they what's funny is they did shoot some stuff at the real sea world but a lot of the stuff obviously in the movie is not at sea world yeah but so they kind of mixed and matched and yeah Miss and Mash. Miss and Mash. Miss and Mash this and a Miss and Mash that and a Miss and Mash pussy all over that crack. What? Oh, <laughs> pussy all over the crack. Okay. Wow. Well, you know. Wow. Well, that's my new rap Okay, song. so the movie begins with, <laughs> with the, neither pussy nor crack. With the John Williams score to remind yeah. us of <clears throat> what we're here to watch. What we had seen before and how great the first two movies kind of are. Or not kind of are, the first movie's great. Yeah. And remember, guys, 3D. 3D. We're going to see the shark in 3D, right, Josh? Like, most yeah. of the kills are going to be in 3D. It's no. going to be, have, like, we're going to get shark face in our face. None of that. And we're, oh. We're going to get a weird tentacle in our face. Tits. We're going to get a dead fish head in our face. We'll get, like, the jaws of the shark in our face. But, yeah. That's, <laughs> Most yeah. of it, I guess, was used for, like, to create depth. Oh, I'm. <laughs> I, because okay, well, I get that because that is the only depth of this movie. Because this movie and the three D trend was kind of big at the beginning of yeah. the eighties. You had all the fantasy movies that were coming out in three D options, and so here we are. Jaws three D is a big shocker. It's going to be in three D. Okay, well, let's start going. So um, yeah, we hear da dum da dum, and it kind of leads into the Alan Landsberg like other music that he's got yeah. like littered throughout the <clears throat> which sounds the very score. much like it's music that you would hear in an amusement park which is fitting because it takes place in SeaWorld but you really feel like you're just listening to theme park music the whole time it's just very almost soft or there's something. so much that reminds me of like Epcot Disney there's about no, it yeah there's and not I, dramatic weight to the songs or the score like there is with like the John Williams. Yeah, yeah. Where you're, yeah, it's, there's no real suspense. Your heart doesn't race when that music comes on or even flutter at it. It's just like a, okay, all right. Well, okay, so we get to see, uh, this opening is kind of boring. We get to see a lot of like underwater marine life, uh, a floating, like Josh said, a floating fish head. We get to see that, yeah, yay. We, we get an attack right at the beginning of the movie, but it's a fish. Just Jaws a fish. gets a fish. How, Not even that big of a fish. How thrilling. Yay! I just This sets the tone for the movie. Geo. I'm going to be scared out of my mind for the next hour and a half. <laughs> With because this floating a fish, fish got attacked by a shark. How unusual. Um, So then the camera kind of like pans over to SeaWorld, uh, Florida. That's it. Like SeaWorld, Florida, we'll say. And... um. <laughs> There are like water, sea World USA. There are water skiers that we're watching put on a little show, and then we see kind of like a miniature set as a man is giving an explanation to a whole bunch of news crews as to like what's happening. So what's it's the happening? The grand opening of SeaWorld. Yeah, Keep we're it. opening the underwater kingdom. Yes. SeaWorld had already been open, but now right. they have this like thirty-five million dollar underwater structure with these tunnels that have viewing that is, windows and it's the most like gaudy looking miniature you've ever seen in a movie it, but it's so quaint and cute you're like oh look at them trying to make it look like a real underwater yeah <laughs> like it, it, it yeah <laughs> i will say like it's a cool concept yes. like I, I would love like to if you've ever been to like the dallas aquarium or some other aquariums that you kind of like go under a pool and you get to see the fish mm -hmm. and you're like oh yay it's like I'm inside the ocean but not getting wet <laughs> I'm splashing in the sea without really getting wet but what if I want to get wet oh, oh. wet and wild wet <laughs> and wild whoppy here we go <laughs> so yeah we're gonna go down into these little tunnels and get to see fishies and they have a kind of like marked out to where there's different views like there's a Spanish galleon ship with like a little yeah. skeleton and then another one has like all these coral reefs and you see all these fishies hiding in them it's kind of boring so that's um, what's happening that's what's that happening. day <laughs> and we do They're... also meet all of our characters uh Chief Brody's son yeah. is the engineer like we mentioned and he introduces us to Cindy and Sandy and Kay 
okay. Oh, mom from my so-called life. <laughs> yeah. And, um, oh, what's your name from Serial Mom? Because we covered Serial Mom in an yes. earlier episode, and we get to, we saw John Waters stand up, yes. and, uh, golly, I what's forgot, her name? I forgot her character's name. And... Oh, okay. But, yeah, so she's also been in another movie we've covered, but, yeah, um, Bess Armstrong plays Dennis, opposite Dennis Quaid. Dennis Quaid plays... Mike Brody. And they are lovers. And they are lovers, not undercover. I mean, they were very open. He's even saying something about his boots he only wears in bed and in the bath. And I'm like, that's strange. Yeah, like, why are you wearing your boots in, in bed? The, that's, that's, man, dirty. that's dirty. It's dirty. And your like, sheets are nasty. If you wore sir. those boots in the shower or in the bath and then you got in the bed, then the bed's going to be wet. It must be like a fetish. Yeah, you think she's like it? Well, she's into wet things. I mean, she likes yeah. dolphins and whales. And, <laughs> so yeah, I like it with your wet boots on the bed, baby. So it's easy to imagine if you've ever been to a Sea World or like a th- theme park at all that like this is where it's all taking place. And he ventures over to the area where um, the dolphins are. She is taking a ride on Shamu, yeah. and he is he's just smitten with her. I guess this movie- the best. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, this movie plays like a very long commercial for SeaWorld. Yes. And later, it's going to turn into Blackfish Part 1. When (laughs) When SeaWorld goes bad. When SeaWorld goes bad. It's going to be the first, like, yeah, maybe maybe SeaWorld's not that great movie. Um, Also, probably one of the most endearing parts of the movie is the relationship between the two of them. It's the only thing that's the most fleshed out. You don't get a lot of, like, how they met, but obviously they met maybe here at SeaWorld. Mm-hmm. They have a life together. They, yeah, they, I you guess... You find out they've been together for a year and a half. They are just smitten with each other, and there is... I think is, they live together? Yeah, I was gonna say, I think that, because at one point they are in their For little breakfast. apartment and there's breakfast yeah, happening. The which, brother's there. Um, I will say, Progressive you know, for 1983. Joe, uh, the director, threw in quite a few nods to earlier films. Like, that breakfast scene is kind of supposed to be a little reminiscent of, like, you know, in Jaws when Chief Brody is there having breakfast with his kids in the morning. Uh-huh. And there's a couple other nods uh, that of course I'm spacing on, but I guess as we go through the movie, I'm like, yep, that's another one. But um, so he do, he is like nostalgic for his first two mm-hmm. movies. I just wish he could have made a. Oh well. So we meet <laughs> them, and he says like you know something about like my brother's coming into town later. Yeah, my brother's coming into town, and we got to meet him. I want to take you to dinner. I want you to give him a big old kiss when you see him. I mean, like full tongue on, take your top off. And she's like, yeah, sure. Let me sure, just huh? feed these dolphins. And he's like, I have all oh, these dumb fish. And that's like a running joke. It's like, can he remember if something is a mammal she's or a like, fish? Like mammals. These are mammals. Like I'm a biologist. She's like, see them breathing water right, or breathing air right now? They are mammals. They're up here. They're talking to us. And they are oh, like... Oh, see that live baby coming out of her vagina? Mammal. mammal. Pussy mammal. <laughs> see her <laughs> suckling my breast? Mammal. Inappropriate. Mammal. <laughs> Okay, so he's like, great, so you'll go to dinner? <laughs> and she's like, sure. Um, there are two assistants that come onto, uh, mm-hmm. like, the area, like little area they are. And they're One like, hey, is... Cindy and Sandy don't want to go into oh, the lagoon. Yeah. Um, what do we do? And she's like, well, they're getting fat, but if they don't want to go swimming around, that's on them. Because they'll totally understand that, right? So you're like, oh, Cindy and Sandy might be... Sense and something. Yeah. Sinsen. Something's got to do with something. They're going to use their echolalia. And that's something that... Well, are you called Ukulele? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's echolalia. Isn't that yeah. what they used to uh, Girl, talk underwater? I, I, oh, I, I, I thought take, you were a marine biologist. I didn't biologist. take my dolphin class in high school. <laughs> I, oh. Or in college. You forgot to take your dolphin class. I forgot. Class. Dolphin 101. Whatever, fine. So, <laughs> Mike's got to go though because he does have a job. He runs all the structural things. And he had, park. What's funny and is he's like thirty, but he's got some real men that he's in oh, charge yeah. he's of. Oh yeah, he's like the like, boss man. There's like the mustache daddy. Mustache he's daddy. Like Let's talk about you, him. Yeah, he's like mustache daddy. You got to go fix the fence. It's open. It's not closing. Yeah. So um, one of the, one of the ladies on the jet skis 
noticed it was open, right? Isn't it okay. something weird like so that? So how that happens is there's some water skiers that come through um, and they're like, it's like a pyramid. So they are on the very top <laughs> and it's like her job, I guess, to tell the people at the gate between the ocean and the fucking water park, like, close, close the gate! Yeah, like, that's who's in charge. The person on top of the pyramid. Like, commands the gate. <laughs> it's so fucking, like, you could just tell that they, they were just like, okay, well, somebody's going to have to cl- tell them to close the gate. We'll just go with that, okay? And she's so excited out. she gets a line. Yeah, they're like, we need someone to point out that the gate's closed. Yeah. We, we can't just show it. We need someone screaming at the top of the pyramid to close the gate. And she's like, all right, here comes my SAG card right now. <laughs> close it. Um, <laughs> so... So anyway, she says close the gate, and the gate doesn't close. And you know, that actress watches, it's really sad, she watches this movie every day, and she watches her line, she rewinds it, watches it over and over, and she's like, damn, I'm good. I'm really good. Like, (laughs) if this... My time in Hollywood was great. Well spent. Because guys, didn't you see, not only did I have a line, but I was on the top of the pyramid. I was top pyramid. And if you were ever a cheerleader, (laughs) top of the pyramid's where it's at. I was top of the pyramid, and I said close the gate. Close it! Close it! Get that gate closed, baby! Uh, and she, they had to do so many takes, too, because she kept trying to change the line. Yeah. She, like, would, like, whip her little head around and be like, All right, everyone, close that gate, baby knows! And they're like, cut! Like, read it! Like, hey, boo, close the gate, boo-boos! Like, and they're like, stop it! You're it giving up. direction only! She's, like, winking, like, got it, Joe! And it goes around again. <laughs> Then she says something like, sorry about your dead grandma. <laughs> she's like, sorry, I'm just trying to give, because she's telling Shelby, the gate technician, like to close it. She just, Shelby. She just wants to relate to him. So she knows his grandmother recently died. Oh my God. And so, yeah, she just wants depth for that character as well. Uh, guys, this is just like um, trivia, but like, <laughs> I, I know she and Joe were talking one night because they were talking about developing her character. And <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. So anyway, um, yeah, she says close the gate and the gate doesn't close. Oh, and so damn. Mike's got to go look at it and he tells the mustache daddy, mustache daddy that's whose what, that's name the is Shelby. Oh, I thought that was his character's name on IMDb was Mustache Daddy. Well, in real life, his name is Mustache Daddy. Oh, but his character's is name Shelby. is Shelby. Got it. I mean, if you've looked at that IMDb page. So he's like, Shelby, go close the gate. No, remember, she says, sorry about your dead grandma. <laughs> and he starts crying. <laughs> so Mike comes over, he's like, uh, Shelby, what's going on? He's like, I was just reminded that my grandma died. I was just reminded that my grandma died. Oh, you're making me hurt. I'm sorry, you're getting stitchy. He is. You having to rub your side, you're getting stitchy. Okay, so Mike's like, besides besides the fact that your grandma died, what else is wrong, Shelby? He's like, well, damn it, the gate is stuck. And my grandma is fucking dead. He's uh, like, but Shelby, she died goes, 25 years ago. <laughs> like, get it together. You were two when she you died. You didn't even know the lady. He's like, I haven't had time to grieve. <laughs> And gr- <laughs> grieving is a process. <laughs> I'm so Look sorry. Look what she's doing to me, I know. Guys. I got him all choked up. <coughs> Pardon. I'm all choked. I'm all choked. Okay, so. Here we go. Here we go. So Mike's like, okay, you got to fix the gate. Um, no overtime, which is why yeah, we're he's making really them. pissed about them. The possibility that his crew might <clears throat> actually make some money. It's so strange because, honestly, Guys, for the most part, this movie is not scary. <laughs> no. It's like, it's a it's, commercial it's, for SeaWorld. Yeah, but it's like also not a good like. It's not commercial an for action. SeaWorld. <laughs> yeah, it's not an action movie. It's not really too much of a romance. It is what you're saying. It is a one hour and thirty seven minute like commercial for you to show up at SeaWorld and drown in the tub. Right. Oh my gosh, I was starting to cry about the dead grandpa. <laughs> Till we remembered. <laughs> so, that. no 
overtime, Shelby. She's been dead for 25 years. And he's like, damn it, I'm going to have to work and not go to the bar, which is going to be a, a, you know, something that's brought up in a little bit. So Mike and Kay... Go get brother. Are, yeah, going to the front of the park to get brother, because I guess the airport's, like, right next door, and he just, like, hops off the plane. And he's like, I'm here at (laughs) SeaWorld. It's so funny. But at the same time that brother is showing up, we are also introduced to two characters that are very important, and that is... Philip Fitzroy and, and Cal. Calvin, the manager of the park. Played by Louis Gossett. Louis Gossett Jr. Don't you dare. Uh, Oscar me. winner. I'm, Louis me. Gossett Jr. My turn to get a Officer drink of and the gentleman. <laughs> and poor guy, this is what he had to follow up his Oscar winning role with. Yeah. But maybe he came and he had a lot of fun in Florida. I'll just look at it that way. Yeah, he yeah. had lots of fun in Florida. A little fun in the sun, never hurt no one. Okay, so the two of them, so Philip Fitzroy has shown up on the scene, and there's like, re- remember guys, the whole time there's camera crews everywhere because it's the launch of the undersea kingdom, and so they're like, oh, Philip Fitzroy, why is he famous? Uh, why is he famous? <laughs> that's what I'm asking, and we find out that he is like a, um, he's a, a nature videographer slash hunter, like. He's Australian, so he's got that like he's little crocodile croc- Dundee. Yeah, crocodile Dundee thing going for him. But like a posh Dundee. <clears throat> like he's like the wealthy asshole version of Crocodile yeah. Dundee. Yeah. He's the guy that like takes people on like walkabouts. Basically to... he's nothing like Crocodile Dundee. He's just Australian and likes animals. And he wears that hat sometimes. And he likes killing them too. Yes. He has no qualms about that. And so there so that guy is there to make a lot of different videos about the water uh, sports and obviously the mammals and the fish that are there and they're just having a good old time making introductions in front of the news crew and Mike and Kay are like oh these are just like opportunistic jerks who at every turn are going to try to nickel and dime people and make a make coin for themselves. Just trying to make a name for themselves and yeah. some money honey. Money honey but we do meet Sean so Sean is younger brother who's been at college in and Colorado cause he's afraid of the water. I don't like the water so I went to Colorado to the <laughs> mountains. I've got PTSD from when I was attacked by a shark and just too. No. <laughs> no, he's really going through something and we respect his journey. Yeah. Okay. Everybody grows differently. And, and he had to run away to, to Colorado. And to figure it out. He's figuring it out. He's coming back slowly. He's like, okay, I'll go to SeaWorld, see my brother, and make out with his girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. Cause In front he, of my brother. Yeah, he like says, hey, to them. And she... Well, first it's like Dennis Quaid hugging, rubbing all over his brother, and then she's all like, he does cup his balls, and 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 then then he puts it down his pants and cups his balls and smells his hand. And I think that's a family thing in the Brody (laughs) in the Brody household, like that. It's just like you have dogs walk up, they smell each other's butts. Well, in the Brody household, the men go cup the balls and then smell it, make sure they're not sick. Check. It's kind of like checking the children, like how are the children? (laughs) Okay. Check in the children. <laughs> Just making oh sure God. that the we're line keep each other up today. Yeah, we we're on, up, we're on some pills, man. <laughs> I wish. Yeah. Um, okay, so not really no. drug free and proud. Um, <laughs> but I just mean we're on a pill as far as this is concerned. Yeah. Okay, so now it's time to go to the bar. And at the same time that everybody is going to the bar, there are two, two scenes that guys, happen. Yeah, one is these two guys trying to break into. That not trying those. Oh yeah, they break in on. to the Sea World yeah. on a little raft. The first one is that we see Shelby. He's doing his job. He has been told oh. no overtime. You get down there. Poor Daddy fix Stash. Fix it. Now I will say this about Hot Daddy Stash. He can hold his breath. And he's like old fashioned, like daddy stash like the mm-hmm. mustache he's got like the oiled up 80s muscles and oh the cut off shirt oh goodness I mean he yeah he's, he's giving daddy. me like, like Venice Tom Beach Selleck vibes kind of, yeah and... almost 70s gay porn star yeah I mean maybe he's if, been in a if few if you know that aesthetic yeah if you've seen that aesthetic <laughs> I've watched maybe a few hundred so I've seen him but um 
So he's like, I'm gonna dive down with my hot bod mm -hmm. and hold my breath for upwards of like nine minutes. And I'm gonna close this gate. I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna be the only person. Like, also, why is he by himself? It's yeah. open the, water. Don't, don't like, they know about the buddy system? You should uh, if you always have two people. If you're getting in a pool, you don't get in alone. That's how you drown. And then you always bring a quarter for a payphone. To, under the water, under yeah, the for the water. pool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Those are the things that um, you were always taught as a kid. Like always have a quarter for a payphone mm -hmm. and the buddy system. Yeah, because you never know when you're going to need to call a buddy or be a buddy. That's right. So you should just always always be, be a buddy. Mm -hmm. Be a buddy. Have a buddy. Prepared buddy. That's what they say. If there's two of you, you are a buddy and you're being a buddy. And that's what buddy and and your buddy is, is a about. buddy and being a buddy. Okay. Because mm -hmm. you're it's not important. my guy, buddy. It's important. Buddy. That's buddy. So he gets down there and he's securing that like underwater gate, looking all like slicked up hot and oily <laughs> in the water. And he keeps looking over his shoulder. He's he's, he sees a little fish. He's hearing things, you know, because there's so much to hear under the water. And, and then Dory comes along. She's like, um, escape? And he's like, why do I need to escape? And she's like, because shark it? <laughs> and he turns around and then we hear shark crunching sounds happen. So Again, like, this movie is rated PG. However, this was back in the day when it was G, P, G straight to R. Yeah. There it was wasn't like much middle back ground. in the day when it was a G in C seventeen. But this so is a very soft PG. Soft I, core? I could see PG? it still getting a PG rating is what I mean. Like I don't even think this moves into PG thirteen territory. You hardly even see blood. Yeah. yeah. I need blood with a Jaws movie. I mean, Steven Spielberg gave us a bloody dead kid in the first one. A bloody dead this kid. This one can't even give us a hot, bloody stash. I can't guy. even get, yeah, an 80s, like, muscle man to show me. Well, he his shows insides. me limbs. It's just they're floating. And yeah. they're not attached to his hot, chiseled David yeah, bod. We, we get, like, a, a severed leg, arm, right? Yeah, it's like a severed arm floating it's away. In 3D. So we obviously know that guy's dead. And I guess um, the shark is really hungry because also we have the two. Now it's like nightfall and there are two teenagers that show up all dressed in black. And this is like almost completely 80 yard because you can see that like mouths are uh, moving, their but mouths they're... yeah, are not synced up. And then sometimes their mouths are not moving at all and full sentences are being said. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, this is when you know that like... <coughs> Blu-ray, like high definition, <laughs> is pointing out some of like the yeah, things that we used flaws. to yeah cloak over with. But um, so they are there to sneak onto the Sea World waters because, like I mentioned before, they have that underwater tunnel thing. Was, they have a whole area of coral, and it's very expensive, and they want to steal it. it. Well, how dare they? Who do they think they are? That's what happens when thieving gets. They're nothing more than a fucking couple coral keepers. That's what they are. Fucking coral keepers. Coral capers. Capers? Capers? Coral capers. Capers, keepers? Coral caper, keeper, coppers? That's the lowest of the low to be a coral caper. That's true. I mean, well, I mean, there's a few things. Like, there's, like, murder. There's that, child murder. Yeah. That's pretty low, too. Coral, coral capers. Come on. Are down below that. Coral like, if the, the rings of hell and Dante's Inferno, they're it's right, like. They're like the lowest. They're the lowest. With the pedophiles and the child murderers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There they are. Coral Any keepers. Any sins committed to kids are like at the very end. So Steven Spielberg's down there with his. That's right. He's like, sorry, I killed all the kid in Jaws. He's like, you do realize these were fiction. But Joe was having to be even underneath him because. Coral. That's coral. Coral. All because of capers. It. Coral caper. Capers. Coral capers. Okay, so, so they're getting murdered by the shark because sharks murder, right? Because yes. that's also brought up in this film. Mike Brody literally says, "Those sharks are murderers." <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I'm like, like are they just doing what sharks do? Yeah, right? and. I mean, honestly, like, can you blame them? It's a, it's a mama shark, and you will find out it's a mama shark and a baby shark, and they're just wandering around in the ocean, and they just happen to follow water skiers because they think they look like food prey, and now they're in an area that they shouldn't be. And now in, he's all trapped in there. And he's trapped, and he's trapped in the closet. He's gone oh. in the closet. He's in there with R. Kelly. Yep. 
singing that song. Okay, so those teens get dead, but we're going to hit it to the bar because we've got to meet Kelly. we got to meet up with Kelly, and she's... Um, she's... she's Awesome the at queen pushing people over on yeah. like one foot. It's yeah. called standoff. And it's really cool, guys. It's a game of balance because for some reason, even though she's there in Florida, there's no fucking reason for her to have this strange accent. She's going to have and the accent can be, uh, hey, it's just a game of balance. You want to come balance your dick on me? No, but you got that wrong because Brody Jr. reminds us it's a game of balance and deception. Oh, and deception. Well, she's over there shaking her hips saying... Oh, she thinks she is hot shit. And she is. It's it, fucking Leah Thompson. Before. And her first role. Yeah. Debut. Before Death. we even get her dipped in all over the place in uh, Back, to, Back the to, the to the Future. She's like rolling up in her little two-piece bikini because she's one of the water skiers and she's like, you want to play standoff with me? I'm going to stand off on you and rub my titties all up on your face and then you're going to take me and have some beers. And then he pushes her over. Uh, that's true. <laughs> and yeah. she's like, oh my God, you got me good. You Damn. assaulted me in this bar. Let's go fuck. Actually, let's go play on the obstacle course at the lagoon. While I try to seduce you, but you're really weird. And you don't want to get in the wawa because you're like a little baby about the water. She's like, I don't think you really like girls. I think that you just want to touch just the top parts. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to tell everybody you touch the top parts. He's like, listen, I told you I don't like the ocean. Your vagina. Clammy. Fishy. Reminds me. <laughs> of the sea. Of the time that I had a She's shark like, attack. Sh He's like, hey, even if it's really fresh, it's it's beautiful salt water. Yeah. Okay? No, he, I, he does tell I her. I dive in. I don't like getting in the water, but it's... um. What's funny is, like, if you started this movie, if you were like, hey, I've never seen Jaws 1 or 2, and you started watching Jaws 3, you have absolutely no idea why... Oh, he's like, I don't like the ocean. She's like, how about lagoons? <laughs> he's like, yeah, that's cool. A shark didn't try to kill me in a lagoon. But he doesn't tell her about that at all. Yeah. And so we don't know why this guy doesn't like being in the water. He just, like, to us, doesn't want to be in water. He just scared. And why is her out at the beach getting intimate? Brody Sr. Brody Jr. Mike Senior. Brody. Mike Brody is... Um, walking with his girlfriend. Walking with his girlfriend. And on she's the, like, on the you bitch. have something to tell me, don't you? Don't you, Mike? She's like, like, on this bitch, will you tell me his she's whispers? Like, Venezuela? He's like, yeah, baby, Venezuela. And we're like, oh, what's going on in Venezuela? And she's like, oh, Mike, I'm going to miss you, baby. I'm going to miss you and your and tongue and your brother. I'm going to miss him so <laughs> fucking much. I'm going to miss tongue and your baby. brother. And, yeah, so we find out that I guess he's got, like, a job offer in Venezuela. And she's ups not upset. She's actually, again, this is a very, like. She's a cool girl. Um, <laughs> Just very healthy like relationship where you support She's each like, other. I'm so proud of you, even though I'm sad that you're yeah. moving away. And Maybe we can work something out. We'll talk later. We'll okay? talk later about it. I'm so happy for you. And can you again remind me why your brother doesn't want to go in the water? This is this scene where we actually learn that oh, those are the Brody boys that came from Amity. And well, unless you, you know, unless you've been watching, you get the name. Like you've yeah, been hearing no, them Brody. That's why so like, I oh, said if this is your first, if yeah, you didn't see Jaws, then you don't if know these things. If you're a Jaws virgin. If you're a virgin, this is not where you need to start. Like, you start on first base and you score immediately with that. Like Even though movie. growing up when I heard of would th someone say Jaws? This is the movie I would think of because this was the one that was on cable and yes. stuff. So I used to always associate Jaws with water skiers. Water skiers, and, and then time talk, people talk about Jaws, be like, oh, the one with the water skiers. And they're like, no, <laughs> no that's no, nah, we're no, honey, not yet. And then of course, no. by like junior high, high school. Oh yeah. See the original, and you're like, yeah. I think that's what people better. meant when they said I I like Jaws. Um, Okay, so they, they, then we then we have a little bit more exposition. We know why everybody's there. There's some motivations. Um, and we know that they're really lovely people at the end of the day. And they want success for each other. And, um, well, that's probably not going to happen here at SeaWorld under the Sea Kingdom. Yeah. And while they're laughing and playing, we cut back to the guys trying to steal the coral. And guess what happens to them? <laughs> they get eat the fuck up. But again, do we see it? No. No, we don't see weird. Shit. Um, I think, is this, no, there are times, 
where the shark growls. <laughs> like a lion, Grrr. like it growls like another animal that isn't in the water and is on land. And has a voice box. And has a voice box. And it's, goodness, it's heartbreaking almost. Once that starts happening, you're like, oh no. What is going on here? Okay, so next day, Shelby's been reported missing. And Mike and Kay are like, you know what? Let's take this submarine that we got from the Beatles cover of, <laughs> of their yeah, album. It's this really and obvious, like, superimposed yellow submarine that's, like, floating around. That's funny. It's, it's just like, yeah, the... When the special effects of it are just like a little, especially now when dated. you watch it, are very dated and yeah, um, a little just a little Which troublesome. I love, but at the same time, I love seeing like old special yeah. effects like that. Just being like, oh, that's how how it had to get done, how they got it made back then. And this is our first the year um, of my birth, the birth of your year, the birth of my year. Um, this is the first where we everybody figures out that there's a shark in the lagoon area so they take the um submarine it's just the two of them why it's the two of them that have to go on this outing i don't know why the marine biologist he has needs a, to be he, the person that goes looking for shelby i get why he does he's hbic she's right. hbic of both, the fish the, that's their official titles is hbi H hbic one hbic one because neither one of them are better than the other. So oh, both, shit! You know, so they got to do everything together. I guess. Um, you know? That makes sense. Um, but yeah, so they, they go down there and they have to get out of the submarine and they start looking around in the coral and looking around on the ship's galleon, the, the Spanish galleon, and um, all of a sudden they see it. That, well, um, the, like, oh, Cindy God, and Sandy, the, the dolphins come up and they're like, eee! Like there's something coming. They're trying to because they're, 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 they're so damn smart. And yeah, and, and these dumbasses are swimming around, and they're like, "Hey, hey there, baby girl! Oh, you gonna do a little dolphin trick in the water for me? Yay! Oh, Clap my hands! Yay! Yeah. Uh oh, I see a shark. Uh oh. <laughs> like, and then they go. This is kind of, the, I guess, a chase scene. <laughs> kind of. They, they got to scramble to get out of the water. Yeah. The dolphins um, help the two of them by, you know, letting them hold on to them. They take them for a ride. And I love how cranked up the film is. Like, how sped up the shot of them on the dolphins. Yeah, those is. dolphins are going fast. It's like, oh, wow. That's Speedy Gonzalez. They speed that shot up or anything. And they get, uh, they get back into the gay area. And this is also like, oh, wow, that shark. So, okay, so the shark jumps a little bit out of the water and we see it collide with the gate like it, it's trying to get through it the little wants, tunnel thing yeah. but it collides and hits the gate and you see like it bend like six inches like the nose and everything it just looks super fake right there <laughs> the shark just does not look very looks believable just like a big puppet, really yeah and um, Mike Brody's like freaking out. He's like, whoa, what's going on? She's like, oh my God, are you okay? Are the BBs okay? Cindy Sandy. And she's the checking babies. all over him and looking at their boobies and stuff. I'm like, stop it. <laughs> you They're don't ridiculous, touch a dolphin's ridiculous, boobies. Ridiculous, okay? But um, she's like, oh my gosh, um, I'm a marine biologist, so let me tell you what that was. That was a shark. <laughs> <laughs> and sharks, they can be mean, okay? And they're like, they bite. Do you know about that? Do you know about how sharks bite? And he's and, did you know when you get bit, sometimes blood comes out? And my they taught me that when I became a doctor. Of marine biology. Of marine biology. You get but bit, it's when the blood. sharks bite, they bleed blood. The sharks bleed blood. So did you see the blood of the shark? They're like, no, ma'am, I think it's, that's wrong. <laughs> I don't think the sharks bleed blood. Like, you shut the fuck up! You're not a doctor! A fish! Um, so Mike's like, oh my God, really? That's what a shark looks like? Because in his life of two other movies, he's never seen a shark attack yeah. before. Um, but she's he's like, like, when I was in Breaking Away on a Bicycle, I did not see a shark. <laughs> oh my God, that's such a good movie. Yeah. Oh. When I was in that rock quarry swimming. With my hot body tanning. In Indianapolis and Breaking no Away, sharks. there were no sharks. Nope, no sharks there. 
Um, when I was looking super fucking hot and breaking away, there were no uh, tugs. When, he just keeps going. He just like we're keeps like, wow. saying things, and she's like, "Oh, uh, we get okay. it. You're hot. Yeah, you, you're uh, hot. Yeah." And your friend rode a bicycle. Um, and you helped him out. In right? the what was that tour to what Indianapolis? <laughs> I'm sorry, titties. And she's still touching the dolphin's tubes. And then we have the skiers that come by, and that one girl's like, Sorry about the shit. Sorry, Sorry, you and your grandma are dead. And Joe's like, Cut! (laughs) It's like, Golly, everyone, you keep fucking up. She's like, Sorry, not my line. Uh, She just like, (laughs) Photobombs. She's my favorite. I love her. That little water skier. (laughs) The water skier that could. I hope she shows up in more movies we talk about in the future. (laughs) She she will. Just on her water skier. She just simps on by like, Sorry about your dead grandma! (laughs) She's always apologizing, hoping it's someone's dead grandma. She's like, likely at our age, people have a dead grandma. So I always just tell them, you know, sorry about your dead grandma. You have to imagine she's holding on to the, like, so she's holding on to the little handle that of the water ski. Even though she's her. on top of the pyramid. <laughs> yes, yeah. So she's the she's one. She's the one holding on at the top. Pulling everyone. Wow. And she's holding onto it with her foot. <laughs> and so every, and everybody's underneath her. I don't know how that really skis. works, but that's amazing. That it's amazing. Mastered that it's, trick. It's, it's crazy. But yeah, so. <laughs> Say my shit, Grandma! <laughs> And, okay, so Kay's like, okay, guys, that's what we call a shark. And now that shark is inside the water park. Oops. Um, sorry. <laughs> now we're, what are we going to do? Because I guess, like, at first they think, like, they caused all that, that the shark got in. But, no, the shark's been there. They just don't know that because they haven't found Shelby's body and they haven't figured out there's a second shark. No way, Jose. They still think that there's just one little baby shark. She's... I guess she got, like, her yardstick out or something in the hullabaloo of, like, getting taken by the dolphins in the water. She was like, yes, and it's 10 feet. Like, they just come up with these numbers of feet without... Nobody got out a ruler and was like, okay, from (laughs) dorsal to tit, it's this much. (laughs) Dorsal to tit. (laughs) Because that's how you measure a fucking shark. Dorsal to tit. Remember that, guys. When you need to measure a shark, it's from dorsal to tit. But everybody seems to have um, a really good idea, and they want to talk about abducting the shark. Yeah, here comes Mr. Crocodile Dundee that's like, why don't we kill him? I think we should blow him up. And Kay's like, I think we should be the first people to have a shark. A great white shark in captivity. She's like, right, Calvin. And and think about it. We had a great white shark. We could charge the fuck out of people. We can make so much money. We're going to be rich, Calvin. What do you say? And she's rubbing Calvin's titties yeah. now. Like, I think that's a therapeutic thing for her. It's almost like, like she hypnotizes yeah, people. Yeah, like you It will catches people get off the guard. Shark. It makes her, it ingratiates herself to people. Yes, because they're relaxed. They're like, oh, wow, we really do have a relationship here. She's rubbing my nipples. It's so. a very intimate relationship. It's not sexual, but it's intimate. Like, no, I feel safe. When we have something important to talk about, she rubs my nipple to make me Calm, feel safe. Collected. Like you said. Yeah. I, I feel... It's a really great tactic to use in business. It's when maternal. You're, <laughs> <laughs> when you're trying to negotiate anything, really, rub <laughs> the person's dead. Okay, can I start now? <laughs> Sorry, rub it on your... Oh, God. Okay, so while she is hypnotic titty rubbing, uh, she Oh, can... hi, Mr. Motorcycle. Oh, hot daddy. Oh, yeah! He got him Harley. Did you guys hear that? I hope you did hear that big Harley that No, just hear Justine screaming that. Oh, hot daddy! Exactly. No, I don't really know if he is. Um, okay, so they decide, yes, we're going to... Um, we're going to get the shark. We're going to put him in a little holding tank and charge money for everybody to see him. So we get a fun little scene where they're all gearing up. And Philip Fitzroy, <laughs> he's like, hey, guys, I got grenades. I'm going to blow this motherfucker up. I swear to God, I'm going to go in the front and we're going to blow it up. My bro is like, no, you're not. There's coral down there. 
there's coral and well, all he, my hard work. Yeah, he's like, um, no, the acrylic down there for the That's tunnels. What is the acrylic. He doesn't is care about the coral. Super um, fragile. So you are not blowing up anything down there that would. Like, it would flood everything. It would destroy everything we've built, and that's, like, $80 million or something. He just spouts off some and then, bunch of money. Um, she has a really hard time because she's... What's her name? Kay. Kay. She's like, Calvin! But Calvin's not face-to-face to her at this time, so she cannot rub his nipple to no, talk to him. No. She's, but she's like, confused. She's like, Calvin! Calvin, what do you think? But luckily, they have this relationship now because of the nipple rubbing. Yeah. That he's like... No grenades over the wall, over the microphone. He himself, in moments, starts to do it just in hypnotically himself. Yeah. So he is in the underwater viewing, like, security room where the, all the little buttons are pushed and where you can open up everything. It's like the control room. And apparently listen to everything. Yeah, so he's like, no, I'm listening. and You're not going to blow up anything. Put the grenades away. Great. I'm so glad that he put his foot down. And they make sure to say and establish a few times, like, well, those grenades only work if you pull the pin. Yep, you gotta pull the (laughs) pin. Pull the pin. Guys, it's okay. You still have to just pull the pin. Pull the pin. So Kay misunderstands this. She walks over to Philip Fitzroy's. She starts pulling on his pin. Um, and he's you like, got no, not Winky. pen is. No, the, not my the pen for And the grenade. She's like, oh, how embarrassing. Oh my God, and Mike's here. But then you, we look over, Mike's <laughs> pulling on his own pen, pen 15. He's like, sorry, I thought Shit. this was hot. I, I misunderstood again. I thought we were doing this. Um. Okay, so, so they're, okay, so we get this moment where uh, they, they've gotten the, the ten foot shark. They're so proud of themselves because they're going to be the first people that have this shark in captivity. And Kay is in this like three foot pool, which I'm like, you guys are keeping a fucking shark in a three foot pool. No, they're not keeping a fucking shark. They're just keeping a shark. Oh, they're not going to fuck it. Okay. <laughs> Damn it. It's not breeding. It's right not now. for okay. So but the three feet's fine. Seriously, it's not guys. A fucking shark. They're taking care of the shark. In a little kiddie pool. Like a little shallow and yeah, kiddie pool type thing. They're like, thing. oh, it's going to be just fine Keep in it here. moving. Let's aerate his gill with like, a hose in his fucking pushing mouth. Pushing the water through there. And Mike shows up and he's like, oh, well, if this is the only way I'm going to get to spend time with you, I'm going to hop right in. And it must have been his pin 15 that it was tickled. Aerating. Yeah. He was aerating the shark. The shark. And the shark comes awake, and yay, now we have a shark that's not traumatized and is in a three-foot tank. Yes. Again, guys. And when she leaves, she's like, keep him here. Let me know if any major changes. You know, she, yeah. she sets that up. Like, I'm going to be pissed if something happens. If happen. the shark is disturbed in any way. Don't traumatize him. We don't want to traumatize him right now. It's just like right the now. acrylics down there. A shark is fragile. Oh, she writes a children's book later. Sharks, a fra- fragile shark. A fragile shark, and in it, at the end, is a picture of her rubbing titties on her little dolphins. <laughs> Written by Doctor K. No, that's not it. Okay. Doctor K. Brody. Doctor K. Brody. They're so, married now. Oh goodness. Um. So while the shark is recovering, we get more footage of SeaWorld. And Calvin is watching his water skiers. He's like, my, oh my pride God. and joy. And then there's all of these um, rainbow flags everywhere in SeaWorld. Oh, it, so was it was pride. It must have been pride at yeah. SeaWorld in 1983. In, because in there 1983, are rainbow flags and everywhere. banners and kites everywhere. And we were he like, said, way to go, John Alves. For uh, uh, that exposure. That's yeah. what we needed. Especially in 1983. In 1983, um, especially... Then especially. we need it. especially keep saying especially. especially. Um, <laughs> what was I gonna say though about those flags? Um, that they're gay. Oh no, gay that the flags. Calvin's like, oh, oh my pride and joy, you know, and the water skiers. I didn't realize they were all gay. Yeah, that it was a gay team. Gay and lesbians. And that is amazing that they all got together. All of them, the best at what they do, yep. coming together. Sea World, Florida. Sea World, Florida. Be who you are. Be who you are. That's, love is love. That's their motto at SeaWorld. Be and, you. Be true to you. And their catchphrase is, Sorry about your dead grandma! <laughs> Come to SeaWorld, where we're sorry about your dead grandma. <laughs> like the end of the commercial is the water skier, Sorry about your dead grandma! Oh, 
God. No, but I, I do have to say, John Alvarez totally, like, fetishizes all these skiers. Like, you get all the shots of them skiing in, like, the beautiful, perfect sun. You know, it's like, obviously, he shot it at magic hour of the yes. movie's flips. And... Oh, yeah, the silver bullets. There's, like, these four guys that wear helmets and stuff. They do all these flips around. I d it's so much wasted time. There's like... so many shots of things <laughs> flipping and during magic hour over the water. There's Shamu, there's the dolphins, there's yeah. the skiers. It's You're like, wow, he really just wanted to make this movie to be like, I want to shoot some pretty photography. Yeah, like, I just want to be Philip Fitzroy in real life. Uh, for Philip Fitzroyce Jr., Joe Alves. That's me, a.k.a. Here I am. I'm the actual videographer of nature, <laughs> but I got this job being the director of Jaws 3. Um... Oh. I also don't really like that. Okay, so where's all the pictures? Of, like, where's all the video of the shark? There's so much know. wasted just coverage of people that don't matter. Yeah, and I just never watching the stuff. get. I love this scene though. Like after those the skiers come in, you see Kelly run in, and um, what's the little brother's name? Sean. Sean is there waiting for, it, and she's taking off like a bonnet. The skiers were in these like little Bo Peep outfits. And I'm like... What the fuck's happening are, were here? Were guys in the 80s into girls dressed up as Bo Peep? I don't get it. Why is she in a bonnet? You guys Was find anyone bonnets interested hot? in... Is a bonnet hot? A bonnet? I don't get it. Uh, past, like, prairie times in 1820s? She could be in a bathing suit. Isn't that sexier than, like, well, a Well, she's weird... a water skier. She needs to be in a bathing suit, not a bonnet. She has a bonnet and, like, a little Bo Peep outfit on. Fucking bonnet Betty over there. <laughs> No. What if that was Leah Thompson's request? Like, I would love to ski in a bonnet. I think it's my dream. Um, I know it's like my my debut, but um, and I laugh a whole fucking lot in this movie for no reason. <laughs> um, but I would love to giggle in a bonnet. Please. The director probably was like, you know what? Just giggle and look pretty, okay, yeah. Leah Thompson. Giggle, shimmy those titties. Say your lines look like pretty. everything amuses you. <laughs> Shark attack! And action! <laughs> oh my god, I'm bleeding from my shark attack! <laughs> okay. Sean! So yeah, Sean's like, hey, do you have some time to hang out? She's like, yeah, let's go on the bumper boats, because you love water! <laughs> She's like, you told me a million times you hate water, but I'm always going to try to manipulate it to get on, because you want to fuck me, so I can make you do whatever you want. <laughs> bumper boats on my bumper booty! <laughs> We'll bump uglies later. How about that? Bump bump in the night. Um. Okay, so they get on the bumper boats, and I also don't understand. There's plenty of room on the bumper boat for the two of them. Yeah. But Sean acts like his third leg needs all this extra room. Yeah, it's really strange. Oh, did we forget to mention that he's a tripod? <laughs> <laughs> he got a big old dick. He got a big old dick that yeah, we never they see. They can hold him up if he and needs help. He needs a lot of room on the bumper boat. So. Well, now that we've established they're going to get on the bumper boats, so we cut back over to Kay, and she is discovering that they have moved the shark, and she's yeah. pissed about it. She runs in, and she sees right away that the shark's not looking very good. He's, like, no. starting to float on his back. And I will say, her. I do find her convincing in the scene. She seems kind of, like, freaked out. Oh, I wrote like, that down, the dramatic plunge. Yeah, she jumps in, and she's like... <laughs> Daddy! She's always yelling at Danny. Poor yeah, Danny. that poor assistant of hers poor is assistant being Danny screamed at all throughout the time. this whole movie. Danny! Daddy, the water! Get the hose! Shit! Danny! Touch my titties! And the whole audience, all the audience is just standing there like, hmm, I wonder what's happening. Oh. And the lady on the intercom is talking like, this just happens a lot. Like, oh, it's okay. Do but not try to intervene. This is Dr. So and so, and she's gonna help. And then the shark's dying. And then the shark dead. Dead. Shark. I'm sorry. Strike that. Shark dead. I said. I said the shark was dying. It's dead. And the audience is just kind of like, mm, okay, we'll go to the There's next like attraction. There's like one kid that's crying <laughs> in the background. You could hear this like, <laughs> and you think, is that Kelly? But then it's not laughing. It's just, you know, and then everyone confused. just leaves. Like, okay. Nobody really cares that a shark just a brand new addition to the park. The exhibit just opened. A shark for the first time is being held in captivity. A great white shark, mm -hmm. dead. No and they're just cares. like, okay, underwater sea time. Here we go. And Kay is like sad and mad all at once. Crying. She's like, they moved him without telling me. I told them not to do that. I didn't have my hands on Calvin's titties and he decided to move my he shark. She's like, damn it. 
I, I can't leave Calvin's side. I have to have my hand on this tit. Uh, no she's so pissed. Okay, so same time this happens, they get the call that Shelby's body has been found because we get a wonderful underwater scene. So we follow these three teenage girls down into the tunnels. <laughs> yeah, this we is where get we get some, some 3D. Terrible 3D, yeah. Bad. We get, a, we get an eel popping out at us, a tentacle, a and gross, a weird, slimy floppy, tentacle. like ugly, phallic looking. Like, that's probably Chuck's dick just flopping all over the movie. Just it's, plop, 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 plop. Just weird. like Steven Spielberg, whenever he was like, we're not making it a spoof film. <laughs> Slapping my dick down. <laughs> Joe's like, I'm slapping my tentacle dick all over this 3D effect. Boom, 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 boom. But while these girls are down there having 80s wholesome fun, <laughs> a, here pops up a dead body. And it goes to this really funny, like, three cut where it's like, the dead body, someone screaming, a man, like, pushing the girl up into the window, I guess, trying to get, to get out. Closer to the. Okay, so there's a. Shelby's so skull, odd. like face, like because his face is still part of his side of skull. Shelby's face comes into view. It's like floating and it's all detached and it scares the girls. But yeah, like There's some man pushes her up against the window and you get this three cut of like screaming, pushed up against the window, and then this close up of her face just stuck up against the window, going like ah next to the head. It's That's one floating. of my favorite like unnecessary cuts of all time. Yeah, it's just wacky and funny yeah and not needed it's gonna make hilarious. you laugh yeah it's again hilarious. it's a it's a it's a funny movie it just didn't think it was gonna be that's one of the things about this movie it's pretty terrible but it's kind of fun to watch in a weird way like it's so bad it's good way um so mike and Kay are identifying shelby's body and calvin is being or he's at a dinner with philip and stuff and he's getting a call from the uh, control room down underwater. And they're like, hey, we're having some complications with the filtration pumps. One of them's completely, uh, or like one of them's working overtime. It's really, really overworking. And he's like, well, fine, just shut it off and we'll have the other one running at full blast. Mm -hmm. You're like, and oh, this isn't gonna be good. What? Now, cut to, it's, it's the big ass fucking mama shark who's hiding in the pump and I guess she knows more about pumps and stuff she, than she likes we do. Pumped. She gets pumped. Well, yeah, she had a baby, so yeah, she, she, got, pump. she got pumped. Pump, pump, the pump, pump. Pump, pump. But it, it pumps her right into the lagoon, and now she's in there. She knew how to get in. She's like, I'm a smart shark. I've been I'm around. i do this shit. I've been a predator in these oceans for millions of years. I am a literal dinosaur in the ocean. Here I come. So the shark's in. Well, Kay goes to see the body of Shelby. Hot Stash. Yeah. And they're all shocked. It's kind of like the best shot of the whole movie is this close-up of Shelby all... You know, his eyes popping out. Yeah, it's good. He's little, been all tore up. It's the best. It's really the real only, effects. Of, it's the only real gore mm -hmm. that we get. And not that I need gore. Movies can be suspenseful and scary, but this one's not. It's so lacking give me, a lot. So give me some blood and mm -hmm. shit to see with a shark movie. This movie is called Jaws and Three. And just, you know, by Three the days. first two <laughs> films, we're, we're walking into this thinking, okay, we're going to see a lot of blood and a lot of, you know, moments of real shock and suspense and gore and there is none of that so this is like our one little moment it's like they really tried to go a little family friendly with this one like oh we can get even more kids in here and people feel comfortable bringing their kids and more money and yeah like it's okay to be a little scared of sharks <clears throat> but not like when the intestines are coming out of their body, I guess. There's like a real artistry to the first movie. Even the second movie is done a lot better. And you could tell there was some like technique and yes. some thought put into it. This one is like just silly. Like it's a product of its time, the 80s. But there's a lot of great 80s movies. So that's also not, you can't blame it on that either. Yeah. It's just like it was really rushed. Um, the Screenwriting is pretty poor. There's not a lot. And like, just characters aren't established. I mean, like Brody, the the guys themselves, like Mike Brody, who's supposed to be the hero of this movie, is hardly developed at all. Like, I don't. 
he's just and it's hot. Dennis Quaid. He's like, just hot and authoritative. Yeah, is pretty much his, his character. girlfriend has more to do with furthering this plot than he does. Um, he does like save the day, but I guess that's just because he's a Brody. Yeah, he's supposed to save the day. Um, so yeah, now we got Mama Shark, and uh, so Kay rushes back to find Calvin and Fitzroy's because she's figured out okay that shark's in. The um, mom is in, in the shark. Yeah. She is here. She does have a cla- like and a to, funny classic line. The the baby was in the park. The he died in the park. The, the mother is, is in, in the, the park. park. Like, <laughs> like she really has to spell it out for these guys, and they're still just like okay. <laughs> they still don't believe her, even when she says, "Okay, this is how big the bite is." Fitzroy says, "What? Well, that would make the shark thirty five feet." She's like, "Exactly. The, it's a." A shark we've never size we've never seen before. And while they're down there telling them this, we also get this hilarious like peeping tom shot where it's the shark like watching them have this conversation, <laughs> and he's like going by the windows, and everyone starts to notice him. It's like ah, but the shot is like from the point of view of the shark, which we get in the other Jaws movies. But something about this him like peeping through a window, it, it's comical. It's, it, and she's saying it's a humongous shark, and yet. He's just peeping in, like, just like, watching. like watching. But yeah, because everybody in this like bar cafe kind of thing sees the shark, they turn around. They're like, "Oh my gosh!" Okay, so the proof is in the pudding. It's right there. The shark is huge. So he tries to break in and, and it fucks it some shit up. Causes a leak. It compromises all the tunnels. The tunnels start to fill up. The control room has to uh, use the airlocks, and we get some amazing extras. These extras better been paid like triple. Yes, they, because they, they commit to their performance. Sell it. I get a little scared in this because you put yourself in their position. They're in an airlock tunnel underneath the water. It's filled up. It's cold because the lady who's supposed to be giving them a guided tour is like, everybody get together. The water is cold. We are in an air chamber and it's pressurized, so everybody takes short breath. Like we, the only oxygen we have. We Don't panic. Save the Can air. We- so everybody get together and warm yourselves up and like you I'm like okay give her it's an like award. oh she trained for this she yeah. knew that one day she was gonna be stuck in here with limited air and a lot of scared extras and there is a, one grandma extra in particular who is wins the Oscars of extras I mean is there an Oscar of extra because it needs to be she needs to be the Meryl Streep of the Oscars of extras I was I was living for every cut to her. Like, she would hold her face. She would grab her hair. Clutch she her heart. Clutch her breast. Like, she was And she's constantly it. like, oh, oh my God. Oh. Yeah, it, she's amazing. Look out for her when and you watch this movie. So now we've got, like, a lot of people in pl- <laughs> plight. Like, there's the people stuck underwater. Um... There's people now. There's people in the control room. We realize, oh shit, we're gonna have to kill the shark, and so they are like, okay, I guess we're gonna have to do it the Fitzroy's way, and they get so. Fitz- it starts getting a little convoluted. There's yeah. a lot of like, we get down this tunnel, then we do that, and then we're grabbing this and doing yeah. pointing at that, and we're swimming under this. And needless to say, um, she the shark has a little bit of fun knocks over some water skiers, knocks over the bumper boats that Sean and That's Kelly really are in. This is in. maybe the best scene. So I, I'm maybe spoiler for like my best scene later. But, but the the tack of the bumper cars and which why are the bumper boats like kind of out in the ocean? I don't really get it. Anyways, but then like the attack of the skiers. I love that one skier that's like, shark! And she turns around, fucks it up for all of them. And they all start falling oh, off. Oh, yeah. She like bent, like, because she, they're holding on to that little handle thing with their feet. She bends her neck back and sees it. It's like, yeah. ah! <laughs> And then you have Mike Brody like running around like a madman trying to get everybody out of the water. Yeah. And he's like he's knocking people cart. out of go car, yeah. out of golf carts and falling over on the golf carts and running and grabbing microphones out of people's hands. And There's a couple of parts chaotic. in this like chaotic rush that where they really throw in the 3D with like toys falling and yeah. Mike Brody f- falling and you kind of see that like, oh, if we had watched it in 3D, he might have like come rolling yeah. into it. Yeah. So again, a lot of times I'm just like, oh, where's all the really good 3D effects? Yeah. This is... And I, I'm all for, like, subtle 3D effects to show, like, you know, kind of like 
this might not be the best example, but like Prometheus. That movie really made you, like, if you saw it in 3D IMAX like we did, yeah. you really felt, like, engaged, involved in the, in the yeah, movie. It's, a, it's supposed to be immersive. It was more 3D's. immersive than, like, things at your face. But when you're watching Jaws 3, you want shit at, in your face. Yes. Okay? Yes. And, yeah, you do want it to be immersive. You don't want it to be too shticky. You know, like, this is just up for gags or whatever, yeah. but, like... And it becomes that way because of the things they put in your yeah. face as, like, a gag. A fucking tentacle just floating yeah, around eel, for... Just, a like, fish it's head. bullshit. It's like, no, we want This would have been the perfect things. opportunity. <laughs> like, put that shark in 3D right here. You know, the bumper boat. It's like, uh, there, this was... It was chaos, and it's fun, and it's, it's also fun because I can imagine being an extra on that set at this point when screaming. everything is like pandemonium guys just be screaming and rushing around like yeah. that that's that's cool um but so Kelly gets knocked off that bumper boat with Mike and she gets bitten by the shark but they they get her pulled up and this is the last we see of Sean and Kelly they go to the hospital and then Mike goes back to trying to lure the shark with Fitzroy because um so he was trying to alert everybody, and that Fitzroy's guy was preparing to get in the water again to lure the shark mm-hmm. back to the filtration pump. And that goes awry. Even though he does get him in the filtration pump, that shark gets back out, and it eats Fitzroy's. Yeah, poor guy. Mm-hmm. Well, and, not poor guy. He's kind of an asshole. Well, the movie, he but, was trying to help save the yeah, day. Yeah, I was saying, and he does it, like, in a weird way. He still helps save the day. He holds on to that, yeah. uh, the grenade. He that, gets partially eaten. And then stuck in the jaws yeah. of the shark. And he um, holds his hand out with the grenade. Like, and, come on, pull the pin. Yeah, like, here I am. I've got my grenade waiting for you. And, um, yeah, we get a lot of the sharks swimming around, knocking things and further compromising the tunnel structure. But the best part is when everybody gets into the control room. And, and they're watching, yes. And you get, get to slow mo and that, like, Ah! Slow mo scream. It and look zooms at their in faces. on all their faces too. It's just like, ah! and we get the only fucking 3D of this shark. Yeah, it's him crashing through. You get the funny 3D glass. It reminds me of Friday the 13th um, in 3D when that glass yeah, breaks. Uh-huh. Like it, 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 same it, shit. Yeah, it's like the same. It, uh, but someone stole from somebody. <laughs> exactly. And in my head right now, I'm like, what came out? Like, in my head right now, I'm like, what year? Like, what came out first? But yeah, whatever. Somebody stole much. from someone. <laughs> and it's not that good. But the whole control room floods. And it's, again, a little bit of chaos. But Mike sees that Fitzroy is stuck in there. Yeah, with the grenade. And there's this, like, floating pole that goes right by. I mean, it's a little... Convenient. Ca- yeah. But he grabs it. Hooks it to the grenade. Pulls the pin. Pulls it. And saves even, the day. Yeah. Even in the last moments, we get a little bit more 3D. A little bit more 3D. <laughs> this is probably the best one. It's the Jaws. It's kind of like, okay, that's cool. Yeah. The, so, the yeah. Jaws get tossed to us, and they're all broken up, but it's, the, you know, also the only part of a shark that is bone is the Jaws, so everything else is just like the little sinewy parts, and the Hard shark lunch. is dead, but... Um, I'll let you tell this last part, Josh, because I know how much you love the ending of this movie. When they swim to the top and we... Oh my god, guys. This is grace. This is beauty. This is elegance. This is sophistication. That is the last shot of the movie. And we do have to mention that while the chaos is happening, the dolphins have been trying to help save the day, too. Yes. They've been constantly distracting the shark. And they've been kind of missing, and Kay and Mike come to the surface, and they're like, oh, where's the, where's our baby? Yeah. Who who shows up first? I think it's Sandy that shows up first, and so, or maybe Cindy and Sandy, you know, she's calling them, she's tapping the water, she's like, babies! Where are you? One of them comes and they're worried she for a minute. She starts rubbing her nipple. Yeah, where are you? And he comes twirling out and they're looking for the other one. <gasps> Here comes Sandy sh- or Cindy, whichever. Yeah. Comes twirling out too. They do their little jumps where they, you know, do their little, little spins in Tanya the air. Hardings up in the air. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> and they, and the movie is in, ends on this. <laughs> guys, it, is, it, it goes to like a freeze frame of them celebrating 
And the dolphins are like bookending each side of the screen yes. in their little twirl. It's like they're pillars, 3D pillars. On the side, yeah, of the screen. Twirling. I can't even describe it because it's ridiculous. And But it's frozen and it's just got K going, yeah, like in the yeah, water. Yeah, the movie's <laughs> over. It's fucking oh, ridiculous. Oh, it's hilarious. And that's it. And we're going to try to get to the beach. Maybe we'll see our own shark. I hope not. Oh, but yeah. I'd... We're going to go have some beach fun. Hopefully shark free. Shark free And we'll be back fun. in like two seconds. So stay tuned. Listen to a few seconds of our buffer music and we're back. Yep. <laughs> beach fun bitches. Bye. Bye. glad you stayed Hello? because we want to tell you about our journey to Ocean City, Maryland. Yes. Let us fill you in on a wonderful ocean extravaganza. And then we'll break down Jaws 3D, tell you our favorite moments or scenes mm-hmm. and give and you our knife moment. rating. Yes. We do knife ratings on this show. It's like a knife as opposed to any other thing that it could be up to five. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Anything it could be. We Anything. chose knives. We chose knives. Some people might choose like umbrellas. Some people choose thumbs. Or, yeah, some people choose like little happy faces or stars. Yes. Or I, I said stars. pumpkins. But ours are knives. Mm-hmm. And here we go. We had two wonderful days in Ocean City. We ate lots of seafood. We saw many shark attacks. We hung out on the beach and laid out on the beach and just enjoyed the batches. Uh-huh, yeah. Josh got a ton of sand stuck in his ass. <laughs> Guys, I mean, I was, I'm was i still farting sand, okay? I mean, it's like little clouds. <laughs> it almost... I almost am like, are we in a sandstorm every time he like, lets one around? Oh, Josh, the sand. Oh, it's your farts. It's just your farts. But no, we really did have a great time. We <laughs> we really did. I'm trying. I sound uh, like I'm trying Julie, to convince you. Um, we did some good eating. Let's tell you some of the restaurants that we went to. Um, so Ocean City is just one long strip. Yeah. It's like 10 glorious miles. Of like of fun things to do and beaches and food and... Bitches. Bitches. <laughs> Uh, like lots of shopping and suvies and the middle amusement cocktails. Parks yes, putt putt golf. Putt putt golf everywhere. There, we you know started our adventures going to Hooked and having a wonderful like early uh, dinner. We had the best like baked oysters and. Else did we get? Oh, crab we, dip. Yeah, I was like, we each got different like fish, scallops. scallops. Oh, uh, so good. Crab dip. Hooked. If you are ever in Ocean City, Maryland, go to Hooked. And it was at Hooked that we came to an understanding that Ocean City enjoyed some libations called crushes. crushes. It's. It, I really enjoyed the orange crush. It seemed like they had the same flavors at most places, like orange, grapefruit, and then one other. There'd be some yeah. different one. I was enjoying the grapefruit because they would use the grapefruit vodka. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, yeah, grapefruit juice, grapefruit vodka, ice, crush it. Yours crush was it. orange yeah. and vodka. Um yeah, so if you um, are in Ocean City, make sure that you grab a crush of and some sort. while we were drinking our crushes, we witnessed a shark attack. Yes, it was at Hooked. That was our first... Well, yeah. um, actually, let's roll it back. So we checked into the Courtyard Marriott. And we witnessed a... And we witnessed... We opened up our beautiful balcony, um, little patio area. We opened up Ocean View. We were, oh my God, so beautiful and so glorious. Look out there, Josh. And just shark attack. as I said, look out there, Josh, a shark literally jumped out of the water and ate a seagull in the air. It was incredible. I was like, oh, okay. And our hotel was really cool. We had, you just stepped out of our balcony and there's the boardwalk right below us. And we were up on 15th street. We had a really beautiful beach up on 15th street. There was like, you know, even like a little bit of rock. So you could go sit on the rock like a beautiful. mermaid. Little mermaid on the sea. We had our aerial moment. Little twerk on the rock if you wanted. Yeah, Josh did do some twerking on some rocks. And it, yeah, it was just a really great location for us, personally. We, 
we um, went and had we walked on the boardwalk pretty immediately after had we got there and fries, had our fries and salt fed some and seagulls. Vinegar. That was one of my most dear moments was yes. the seagulls. We made friends with a lot of seagulls. We bought a huge bucket of Thrasher's fries, which they're known for their vinegar fries. Basically, yes. they just give you the bucket and you go put all the salt and vinegar you but want to your on taste. Them. And it's the best fries in the world, not mm -hmm. joshing you. <laughs> we were able to check into our hotel early, but yet the restaurants that we were wanting to go to, they didn't really open until Yeah, the there were dinner. So we did the Thrashers. Tied us over. Then went to Hook later after we had, uh, we had, did we get in the water yet? No, we got in the water that evening. Yeah. We liked our nighttime swims and our early morning swims. Nighttime and early morning swims and laying out. You know, we had a pool, so we would lay out by the pier. Um, let's keep going. That evening, um, we also had lots of ice cream while we were there. And there is a restaurant because um, they serve more than just ice cream, but it's kind of like ice cream. Yeah, they're known for their ice cream. It's called Justine's. Justine's ice cream. And, and we went and had some of Justine's ice cream. My goodness, my ice cream. Is it's really good. Tasty AF, as the kids say. Choice ingredients. It was a little pricey for two like double scoop cones. It was mm -hmm. what like fifteen, sixteen dollars. Oh yeah, that. it it was definitely ritzy. I was going to say it's ritzy kind of ice cream because you're was, paying for it. But you know what? You can taste it. You, you can, can taste mm -hmm. the extra dollars or two. It was right in it. Um, I don't know why I went like thick New York. Oh, I'm glad you did. The beach was in full swing. Like there, it was super, super busy. Um, it was there on the beach while we were there that morning that we saw the shark attack, the second shark attack shark of the mermaid attack. on the rocks. Yep. And this is, I think, when you and I both got really serious about. Like, the, wow. Yeah, like, oh, Why wow. Why is this not being more reported? The Ocean City it was intense. is surrounded. We would like say, yeah. like, did you guys see that? And other people were not believing us. Like, they didn't witness it as the waters got super bloody. It was crazy. <laughs> and while we were feeding our seagulls, like we were talking about earlier, making all our seagull friends, shark attack. While we were <laughs> strolling on the boardwalk, shark attack. Shark attack. It, it uh, just was never ending. There was one There was one part where we were on the boardwalk, and there's no water around at all. Shark attack, shark attack into the Ripley's Believe It or Not He'd come out of the side of the wall, and he was just biting at whoever would come by, killing everybody. It was really intense. Oh, let's speaking of the boardwalk, though, let's talk about our favorite little attraction. Oh, we got we did get to ride the haunted house, and it is what's funny is it's still exactly the same but different. Like it's still rickety and old, and you get some like just cheesy old time scares, but they've added in real performers now like they had people jumping out as like Jason and Ghost Michael Face. Myers and Ghostface and I gotta say they got me one mm -hmm. I was not he expecting it because after 30 years of going to Ocean City since I was a little kid y'all he wasn't prepared they've never had like live performers mm -mm. in the haunted house he got a show so they got me and Justin got it on camera a few it's times. on candid camera I recorded the entire entire ride um, cause we're going to make a pretty epic TikTok or two, <laughs> who knows how many we'll have to make, but we'll include some of that ride. We'll definitely make sure that you guys see where Josh got, um, the scare of his life hey, and you his wife. you would be scared too if it happened to you. I was scared. I got, I was like, oh my gosh, you're just <laughs> jumping out, out of nowhere, Michael Myers. Um, yeah, it's it's rickety and creaky, but it's got definitely some updates. And if you guys haven't gone to the little haunted house on the boardwalk, and while we were on the haunted house, shark attack, shark attack in the in, in the, the haunted, haunted house. house, they have the real like I was saying the live performers, but yes. instead of they have like a real shark, <laughs> and if it gets you, it gets you. I guess. It was crazy. There was so I also weird. we were both concerned about the lack of water. He seemed fine though. I guess maybe it was, <laughs> I was the like, blood. Doesn't he need? water running through their gills. We learned that in Jaws 3. He needs to be aerated. Aerated! Hey, someone get the hose! <laughs> that, 
Oh, wow. That's Oh, uh, so we also cool. got to tell you about another really yummy place we oh. ate called Fish Tales. It's right on, it's on the bay side of Ocean City. Yes, and um, the dock and area. on the docks, and they make it like a big beach, like you sit out in the sand, and you're kind of at these really colorful picnic tables. And, boats and floating cabanas. Mm -hmm. And we drank a bunch of crushes and ate hour. like buffalo style like scallops mm -hmm. and what else did we get? Oh we had a half pound of just some steamed lovely shrimp. shrimp. And they had the best cocktail sauce. I know that's I mean the shrimp was great too but yes. something about that cocktail sauce. You could tell. And it's just like peppered in with that old bay seasoning and they had the yummiest crab cakes that were like you know no filler just oh like, just a lump big old pieces of crab with mm. some yummy flavoring and fried up perfectly mm. so go to fish yeah, baby. if you want to just have like a fun atmosphere while you're drinking mm. they have like a couple big bar areas too so i think the place is known for you know their drinks. Yeah, they stuff. even have like a play area too for like you could tell it's just like Little a family kids. fun place, but also like a place where you know the 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 party crowd comes, mm -hmm. and then like the floating cabanas where maybe you could rent them and have like a little party of ten out there mm -hmm. floating and seeing the the boats all dock, and there was a shark attack as well. Yeah, Poor we cabana boy saw got the shark attack. I know, it was so out. sad. Well, they went ahead and so just sad. had the funeral right there because everybody was present. Everybody was there. So, so everybody threw a couple pieces of scallop at them. Uh -huh. or, yeah, or a crush. There were a few people that were, you know, like dripping it to They're the like, home. Or one for him. Yeah. It was intense, guys. I think by the time God. we left, because then, you know, this morning we had our donut set on the patio. Saw we witnessed a shark attack. Shark attack and <laughs> it was one of those where the shark attacked another shark and they were kind of having like a game of chicken, but yeah. I mean, clearly one of them won. Um, it, it worked out perfectly for our Jaws theme mm -hmm. episode. Couldn't have. All these shark attacks. And we, did we say we went to White Island for the Blue Crab Estuary? No, we didn't. We went. Oh, that was to, fun. Yeah, it was really pretty. We'd never done that it's before. It's a nature park. It's, again, kind of like in the middle of the bay. You drive over the water to get there. And there's like this long dock, which is some picturesque scenes. And you see this little, like, I guess, estuary mm -hmm. <laughs> with a bunch of little crabs running around. And it's we just, didn't eat those. No. I can't we, see them alive before. I can't do that. I mean, clearly they're happy and just dancing from side to side as crabs do. Right. I mean, when, when you get it as a crab cake, you don't ever know it was alive. Yeah, you're not looking at the crab cake thinking you were just doing that little side to side <laughs> dance. Even like, though I do love just a crab, give me a hammer and you open, open it, up, it up, but he's have still a good already time. dead. I'm not watching him dance around on the ocean floor. No, that's not, no. I can't do that. Oh, jeez. And no, I had, um, what was the fish that I had at Hook? Rockfish. Rockfish, yes. It looked yummy. It was super good. And I had never had it before, so, you know, you have to look it up. You got to know what you're eating. So, it's like, what the hell is this? Actually, Josh looked it up because I was too busy eating it. So, he just read to me what it was all about. And we got to tell you guys to stay away from the dough roller. The worst, nastiest breakfast we ever have. And we mean it. Like, it was gross. We um, had this amazing idea. Well, we thought it was an amazing idea that we would wake up go to the beach first thing in the morning and then once the breakfast crowd had died down we'd go and get some breakfast slash brunch at our mm -hmm. favorite place called the Bayside Skillet we got there about 11 and they had like a line in the parking lot and it's, of people it was waiting. Wednesday and it was hot and we're like we're not waiting in this hot line in the parking lot to yeah get so then we tried another restaurant and they had an over hour wait and we're like we're hungry we've been out at the beach all morning um, so there's all these places called the Dough Roller everywhere, and they boast that they have the best pizza in town, and that we also do pancakes that go open for breakfast. So well, like, yeah, it says best pancakes and pizza. No, our specialties are these. It's all like, okay, never mind. Their pancakes were fine. It's we also got a crab omelet, and it. Uh, just thinking of it now makes me want to barf. Yeah, and guys, you can tell know. it was like a frozen pre-made omelet that they just like put some cold crab in the middle. And threw a slice of like craft single on it. Yeah. Heated it up a little and called it a day. I want to say it was kind of like a waffle house. You know, there's so many of them, but no, honestly, like I like a waffle house. Yeah. And they, that was, it was bad. It we was, were like, we should have just gone to McDonald's. Yeah. Like, McDonald's breakfast. Would have been way is cheaper. Better. IHOP is better. Like, the, 
We we're trying not to do a chain. I mean, this is a chain, but it's like an Ocean City chain. Yeah, it's just so on... stay away from the Dole Roller. At least for breakfast, they might have a bomb pizza. We yeah, don't know. We don't I guess. ever we, want to go back and find out. Don't plan. And we'd seen them for years. Like this was their ten-year anniversary trip going together. Yeah. Of um, five years for the show. Yes, and <laughs> it's just sad that after all these years, we were like, okay, let's try. We'll let's finally try, try the Dole Roller and. No wonder for 10 years we've been avoiding it. Yeah, we should okay. listen to our gut. Should have. And, of course, while we were there, shark attack. So In the dough roller. In the dough roller. On the bay side of <laughs> the little peninsula. It, it's crazy, guys. Yeah, it was nuts. Um, we then, the probably one of the funnest shark attacks was when we visited, because in Delaware, there's no sales tax. So, oh, we yeah. went and got our suvies at Finn's. We love Finns up in Delaware, up in Fenwick Island. It's just like a short jaunt up the coast. And by from Ocean short, City. we mean a mile and a half. Like it is. Not <laughs> yeah, it's just long like right there. At all, it's five extra minutes. So, and it's a lot of fun. And they have really quality souvenirs. Then, yeah, their hoodies are top notch. I got one five years ago. Actually, the with we the first, did our yeah. first episode, and it's still my all time favorite hoodie. I wear it all the time, but I'm starting to wear it out. But it's lasted so long for somebody who probably throws that thing on like once a week for five years. <laughs> for five years, yeah. So, I had, I had to way get to go another fins. one. Yeah, you, way to go fins. You, you've kept it up. We're really sorry that, again, another shark attack happened inside mm-hmm. your souvenir store because, I mean, it was a hot, wet mess in there. And there is, sorry to interrupt, but there is a fins in Ocean City also, but if you go to the Fenwick Island one, there's no sales tax. However, your souvenirs will say Fenwick Island. But they kind of bleed into each other, Fenwick Island, Ocean City. Yeah. And Fenwick Island's a little snootier, so people might be like, oh, you went to Fenwick Island. But I got another one down in Ocean City, so. <laughs> Yeah, we did end up going to both Fen stores. But, yeah, because but... we just like them so much. Okay, but well, yeah. that was our trip. Our was... two days in Ocean City, Maryland. Love Ocean City. It's very nostalgic for both of us. Yes. I've been going since I was a little kid. She's been going for the last 10 years back you know, every couple years we go, it seems. And it's just a nice place to get... It's, it's an escape. It's... Um, very it's beachy. quaint at times. But then it can also be real fun. And it reminds me of times before. You, you know, like, mm-hmm. it's just a It's very, just very quintessential Americana. East Coast. Yeah, mm-hmm. Americana beach resort town. It's it's, it's very uh, Jaws, Amity, like... One of the best island. boardwalks. Mm-hmm. Love it. Yeah, the boardwalk itself is 10 miles. Or, wait, no. The the boardwalk itself is, what did we say? Like 30 streets, 30 Thir- blocks yeah, or something? If not more, because it starts before... Yeah, yeah. It's about, like, probably 30 blocks or more. And then Ocean City is 10 miles, and it's just one long, long strip of, like, ocean on one side, Bay of the Ocean on the other. And just restaurants bay, bay, bay. and hotels and mm. shopping and... All kinds of beach things to do. You know, they offer excursions everywhere. There's amusement parks and golf. Yeah, we just love it. You can do that. You ever get a chance? Sailing. We're gonna yeah. do the parasailing one day. We're gonna build up the courage to float. Uh, maybe and... I'll at least like I one day I want to like you know rent a boat and like yeah. have someone take us around. So or like a little wave runner in the like, bay area. Drinking it crazy and so have another take shark care of us. attack. <laughs> That's right. And we were just kidding about all the shark attacks. No, literally no, no shark attacks. Um, only, I never, I didn't see didn't. a dolphin. Did you? No, but I, oh, one day on them. the, yeah, we usually see them in the mornings, but maybe we weren't getting up early enough or something. Yeah, we did but we did usually I see some kind of like marine life, but we didn't <laughs> see any besides the crabs in yeah, that little estuary. That's true. So, oh well, um, but we got in the ocean and like we said, it was really cold. We had so much fun and we can't wait to get back there, but let's jump into Jaws 3D. 3D. All right. I think I already gave away what my favorite scene is, which is the big beach blowout, I guess yeah. you would call it. It's when, the, it's when um, Kelly and Sean are in the bumper boats. It's when the water skiers um, have their The water skiers mm-hmm. are going. Mike is running around like crazy trying to get people out of the water. The shark is coming. But it's really the only like grand moment of suspense in the whole movie. There's little moments, of course, but I think John Alves, that's the director's name, correct? Yes. I think the concept was a little more than he could handle or that 1983 could handle. Yeah. Because it now, 
is just a cheese fest. Mm -hmm. And like I was saying earlier, I have a lot of nostalgia for this movie because this is the one starting like eight years old was always on like TNT or USA in the summers. It was always Jaws 3 that I would, you know, I always saw the skiers and, you know, it really wasn't that scary. So like eight, nine year old me could handle seeing it, you know? Yes. I hear you. But it's... now it just, it's just goofy and boring in a lot of regards. You Sorry, could basically I'm... chop off like half the film. Yeah. The only thing that comes off authentic is the K and Mike relationship. They at least, that was maybe the most well-written part. And that's even a little goofy and a little like, okay, why is she kissing the brother in the mouth? They've only known each other for a year and a half. It's yeah. not like, that's like really her like brother-in-law that she's known all these years. And, yeah. But I mean, it's They were something. trying to build like, um, like a foundation that was almost like, oh wow, like that's heavy for you guys being together 18 yeah. months. Yeah. And but, I think they were trying to also build the, you know, where we would feel the empathy, the sympathy, mm -hmm. where we would feel, we don't want these characters dead because they love each other. And they're going to Argentina. Yeah, exactly. Or like, Venezuela. Yeah, that's where it is. You're going that's to his Venezuela. brother. We like Mike. And yeah, we... he's got to finish college. He didn't get attacked by a shark. <laughs> we don't want Sean to get attacked. Um, um, yeah, okay, yeah. What's your favorite I, scene? My favorite's going to be kind of like, I it feel like be the same kicks, too if it has to be. Um, it kind of kicks off like basically the second half of it is um and i like it because it's got cindy and sandy and it's that chase scene oh, of yeah. the sh you know the the baby shark down there with baby the two of them do, 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 the music do, do, do. is suspenseful and they are like you know chase like running for their lives but in the water and the uh the shark's chasing after them but it's a lot of like cut twos like you never really see like all of them in the same yeah. shot it's like here they are getting away and the dolphins that sped up um, <laughs> yeah. film of the dolphins like taking them to really the manic, gated so. area and it's just uh, it, it is that moment where they're pulling him out of the water and uh, he breaches the water and like hits the fence and it's very mm -hmm. uh, for like five seconds you are like oh my gosh is he gonna bite one of them no and it does have really cheesy CGI which is too commonplace in this movie where it the may not even CG... be CGI or it's like very early CGI. Yeah. It's like oh yeah, it could have just been like a little model and, miniatures. Yeah. And um, it does look to me a little bit um, like claymation at some point. It's like how his tail moves. And... Yeah, it just it's poorly yeah. done. Um, or in, in the 3D that's in it with a little uh, submarine. Yeah, that I'm just like I, all the 3D is like wasted it's not like i where is it used to the advantage where is it used to be scary like to yeah. elevate the movie it's, like, it's giving not us a fish head isn't very scary. yeah it's... i'm sorry but like a, an already like cut off arm just floating isn't really that scary like why am why is the shark not jumping with its mouth right out at us come at me jaws bitch I want to see yo teeth. I want to see your motherfucking teeth. And I think that's also the other problem is they do show him too much. Yeah. They kind of forget what makes the first one so scary is the lack of the shark. You're seeing more of its point of view. But when they do the point of view in this one, it's almost goofy, like him peering through the windows <laughs> like of a restaurant. A, him overhearing, like, can he really hear what they're talking about? Like, <laughs> yeah. Or no, I guess that's the mama shark. But like, the mama shark is just like hanging out, peering through the window, just waiting for her moment. Yeah, like, like, oh, don't you talk about my son like <laughs> yeah. that. How dare you bring my son and my family into this? <laughs> don't you bring our family into this. How dare you bring my family into this. Okay, guys, let's get to it. We're going to tell you our knife readings right now. I'm going to tell you my knife rating. You're going to tell them your knife rating. Okay. We're going to leave it at that. You're not going to question a knife rating. <laughs> oh, you're getting defensive already. Are you ready for this knife rating? What's your knife rating? I'm giving it one and a half knives. Oh, one and a half. Wow. Okay. One and a half. You do you, girl. Um, I'm going two, only because I have to say this isn't the worst movie we've watched. And I still like see it through that lens of nostalgia a little bit. And it's fun to kind of pick out some of the weird 80s stuff. To me, it's still kind of a fun movie, unlike, let's say, like, The Happening that we've oh watched Oh, God, before. that was just... To me, that was painful to cover. Because we, you know, when we do these episodes, we watch the movie a couple times. Mm-hmm. To prepare. Well, just because I'm giving it a one and a half, you know, knife doesn't mean 
you shouldn't watch it. Just know that it's like, it's not... It's not Jaws 1 not or even Jaws, Jaws 1 or 2. Jaws 2. And I have to reflect on, I gave Jaws a 5. I think I believe I gave Jaws 2 a, a 3 or a 2 and a half. So when I think about what is this one worth and I think about what I might still have to give Jaws 4 the, the revenge, revenge. <laughs> um, I actually might even uh, nope we won't go there yet yeah. you guys will just have to find out next what that is we, next time we come to Ocean City we'll do Jaws Revenge yeah the revenge but um, yeah I'm, I'm going to stand by it it's 1.5 knives it's a knife and a half another knife you can still shank the fuck out of somebody with that knife <laughs> but it's pretty boring you're gonna bleed out and die yeah. you know slow death so watch it for to have like one of those fun like let's watch a really bad fun movie and laugh at like the 80s attire i mean like we said bonnets and like bo peep outfits on water, the water speed. skiers it's ridic- and that's yeah. supposed to be sexy or maybe just watch <laughs> if we could just for the fun. Parts through all the scenes and then just like all the things that have nothing like I'm sorry I don't need to see those water skier guys the silver bullets doing yeah. eight different tricks like just show me one pick the one that's yeah. the best and go with that one yeah it's just the things he chose to kind of highlight and it was I think he chose to do those things maybe to open the movie up and make it feel like a bigger movie like oh let's get some good shots of Shamu coming out of the water let's get these guys flipping let's get some Dolphin spinning, like you know, I feel like he thought he could overcompensate with yeah. though that type. He's of... just trying to get his retirement paid for. <laughs> Joe was like, "If I make this, Sea World is I'm I've got it made. They're gonna use parts of this for the rest of all their other commercials." Yeah, I wonder how they abused those animals during the making of this movie. Ah! Allegedly, Cindy and Sandy though. <laughs> Um, I believe one of them is still alive. I was reading some trivia. Oh, and it's like fifty that. something years old. Um, but actually Cindy and Sandy are males. Uh, oh. but in the movie these ladies. That's okay. I mean you you know, you can change your mind. Yeah, they're non binary. Yeah, maybe. you can you can choose one, you can choose the other, you cannot have a choice. It could just be what you were you. born with. That's all on you. I love you. Cindy love and you. Sandy, Dolphins. <laughs> um I think we're... Oh, uh, so next up, episode 67. 67? 67. Here we go. We're going to go to uh, Virginia. We're We're going going, to Virginia. Yeah, we're going to the Shenandoah National Park in... In Virginia. It's yeah, like, it's a pretty big, much like Northern Virginia. It's the it's a part of the Blue Ridge Mountains and uh, the Appalachians. Appalachians. Yeah. So, but the Blue Ridge is kind of like just specifically where they are. I remember when we went to D.C. Josh, we were at the Varhazi, uh-huh. and we were looking through the those binoculars that you could. Um, they had like a viewing mm-hmm. area where you could see the bigger planes that were out there yeah. on the. But um, they have a beautiful backdrop of the Blue Ridge Mountains. And I've been thinking about that specifically yeah. lately. Like just reminiscing about looking through the little viewfinder and mm-hmm. seeing those Blue Ridge Mountains and thinking, we're going to be up there. Hopefully not going through what our friends in the movie The Forest went through. Yeah, we'll be covering the forest. We're going to go do some hiking in the Shenandoah National Park, which is just gorgeousity and it's all forest, basically. Yes. The Appalachian Mountains are very green, you know. Very lush. Very lush. And there's a lot of amazing trails. A lot of steep trails. I know we're going to be working our ass off um, on this hike. We'll so, do a little picnic. That'll be next month's episode. So mm-hmm. stay tuned. Remember, go re- rate and review us, please. I know it sounds like a simple thing to ask, but it really does help. So if you get a chance, go give us that five-star rating wherever you listen to us. Review us wherever you listen to us, please. It really helps us. And follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all the places. Yeah, just uh, stay involved and interactive. We um, love we our love little community. So. Talk with you guys, and we're really excited about this uh, uh, next upcoming episode. We we're so happy to get to do this one, and we just like, we just oh like doing them. Okay. So stay tuned. Love you. Bye.